Welcome back to Dragon Army Books. My name is Dustin, and this is a different video because just recently I went on a trip to Chicago, and while there, visited a couple of bookstores, and I took you with me. I actually took my phone with me, which also is a camera away from home, and I tried my best to record some of the footage walking around these bookstores and uh, then at the end sharing what haul, what books I gathered from these bookstores. Now, warning. I do not have a steady hand. I don't know if it's just genetics or if I'm unhealthy or if something is neurologically wrong with me, but I shake at all times. And I know you probably can't pick it up on the camera uh, now, but uh, you will be able to while you're watching what I thought was a steady hand going around this bookstore, these bookstores uh, with my phone camera. But what I've come to learn is that just a little bit of movement goes a long way. And so I tried to mitigate that as much as possible in post, but you're bound to get a little bit of motion sickness in the next few moments. But I hope that you enjoy this journey and my sultry voiceovers as we explore a couple of bookstores in Chicago. Our first stop was Myopic Books on Milwaukee Avenue. It is three floors worth of used books. It is very cramped, but that also means cozy, right? You've got the main floor, the upstairs, and the basement. The upstairs is business, religion, women's studies, and the like. But in the basement is where I spent the majority of my time because that's where the sci-fi and fantasy books are. My problem with used bookstores is that they are often like my thrift store experiences where I fail to find anything good. I did find a few books here worth noting. Red Rising being one of them. Why someone would get rid of that, I have no idea. There are a lot of Orson Scott Card titles. A few Terry Goodkind, who I've never read before, but Naked Empire sounds titillating. I also found a good amount of Robert Jordan books, and having just finished The Eye of the World for the first time, I could have got The Great Hunt, but decided not to. Also, why are there fantasy books in the sci-fi section? I did later find out that all of their adult fantasy was mixed in with sci-fi. Why it wasn't marked as so, I don't know. I'm also interested in reading the Lightbringer series by Brent Weeks, but can't start at book five. And here we have the author of The Time Machine and The War of the Worlds, who has written The Passionate Friends. Someone that's not me, read this and tell me what it's about. I don't need any more Lord of the Rings books, but I'm always intrigued by what covers I can find. This set seems to be a mixture. Uh, the first book is boring scenery, but it's followed by a movie still? and then an artistic representation of a movie still? Odd choices. I then found another one much more to my liking. I've never read any of the Pern books, but Dinosaur Planet looks promising. And if that's not enough, check out Dinosaur Planet Survivors, book two in the Dinosaur Planet Omnibus. And then I found Footfall, which is probably the finest novel of alien invasion ever written, says the author. You might need to pause this to enjoy all of the details, but an elephant with a bayonet and rifle using a hand mirror to see his opponent 
might say enough. Then I found book two of the Farseer trilogy, which was a tempting buy, but one I ultimately skipped because it wouldn't match my copy of the first book in the series. My wife loves anything and everything to do with Oz, so she's always on the lookout for more Wizard of Oz books. In the YA section, we've got Harry Potter's as usual, some beautiful Rick Riordan books. He always has the best covers. A Legend of Zelda manga with Majora's Mask and A Link to the Past. I thought about getting this for my friend Nolan's birthday, but his birthday just happened, so I'd have to wait an entire year to give it to him. I found book two of the Mysterious Benedict Society, but I need book one, which is not here apparently. In the humor section, I found some Calvin and Hobbes, which has all the warm feelings. Also found a book I tried to listen to, but the author's voice was incredibly annoying, so I quickly turned it off. And I finally found my section, which is just labeled Geek which just had a bunch of comics and graphic novels. Speaking of, we went down the street to Challenger's Comics, and I love comics. I just recently started watching Invincible on Amazon Prime, so it was cool to see some of the source material. There's obviously a lot of it. It's a really cool take on superheroes, but it's not for the faint of heart. They've got so many comics here. Superhero comics, they actually aren't my favorite. I prefer sci-fi and fantasy comics. I always love to see critical role stuff. I've had Descender suggested to me a few times. It's a story about a young robot boy struggling to stay alive in a universe where all the androids have been outlawed. Sounds intriguing. I've had a love-hate relationship with Saga, but it's been more love than hate. It's good to see so many issues here, along with complete hardcover collections. I told you, she's always looking for Oz content. There's surprisingly a lot of it. I guess she's not the only Oz fanatic out there. She's also obsessed with Marie Antoinette. In this one, Marie is a ghost spirit or something. They also had a young challengers room for all the kid comic readers, right past Deadpool. Inside, they've got some really cool Ninja Turtles and Batman statues, along with some great comics for kids and also adults, because look, there's Avatar. I found Bear. It's a graphic novel that I got an ARC of a few months back and rated it five stars. Get it, read it, it's adorable. Well, here's what I walked away with. It's not as much as I wanted, but I'm not complaining. I got the first book in the Discworld series that I haven't yet started, The Bone Shard Daughter by Andrea Stewart. Right under that is a new Old Guard prequel that I didn't even know existed. It actually just released on the day that I was in the comic shop, actually. Under that is Descender, and then finally, Once in Future. It's a story where King Arthur is back from the dead, and he's angry about it.
That was a different kind of video altogether. If you liked this and you would like more of this, then let me know in the comments down below. I haven't been to a bookstore in what feels like at least a year going on two because of all this been going on in the world. It's been nice to finally be able to go back out some again, cautiously, of course. But if you would like to see more of this kind of abnormal co content then let me know in the comments down below and if you've got any predictions on what i'll think of these books that i picked up also let me know in the comments down below as always thank you so much for taking the time to watch and like this video if you haven't yet click subscribe join the dragon army we'll see you in the next one